I love that this community comes together from all over the world. And there are many subjects that I think where we come from probably really affects what it means to think about our monthly topic. This month, as we think about risk and security, I am so aware that I have been raised that every cell of my being, of my brain, of the way that I think has been steeped in a culture that tells me that security comes from might, that security comes from having the biggest army. I remember back in the Reagan years as a young adult hearing the phrase peace through strength. And that basically meant we have peace because you will do what we tell you to do because we have the biggest army. I will never know what some of you know, what it's like to grow up in a place that doesn't have that in itself, that doesn't raise the children on that sense of you're the best and you're going to inflict yourself on anybody who challenges that. And that's what security looks like being able to know that you're always the strongest army in the room. You know, the United States spends a huge amount of our budget on military. And while there are many of you who are in the military who serve, please understand I am not in any way talking about the individuals who choose to support our country through serving in the military when I talk about the fact that we are way out of line with understanding what it means to be in right relationship with other countries. Recently, I had the privilege of going to Iceland. CLF took a trip, 11 of us went. Our board chair, Stefan Jonasson, is from Iceland and knows it well, though he lives in Winnipeg. His grandfather moved down from Iceland. And he has been there many, many times and took us all over. Now, Iceland has a Coast Guard because it's an island and they obviously need to save people who have boat issues, but they do not have a military. There is no military. And they spend their money so differently than my home country of the United States. The wage gap between rich and poor is the narrowest in Iceland of any country in the world. Everyone there gets a good education and has health care. Everyone gets a living wage. I have to tell you that after only a couple of weeks there, actually after only a couple of days there, I began to feel an ease of well-being in my body that I had not expected, that in fact I had never experienced before. And I realized that here in the United States where I am taught that my own security depends on keeping other people away and always asserting what I need, that I'm tense all the time, that we walk around here in this country with that kind of tension. It was a blessing to be in a place like Iceland. And as I was there, I heard from several people who lived there that sometimes they fear that another country could come and completely take them over because they have no military to defend themselves, because they're nervous that other people would step in and support them if they needed that kind of assistance. I'll never know what that kind of vulnerability feels like either. In the United States, the most vulnerable that I've ever felt was on September 11th, 2001, when I was at the United States Senate, ready to hear poor women testifying about changes in welfare law, and suddenly everything, pandemonium broke loose. We were all escorted out of the Senate. I could see the Pentagon burning. Everybody was milling around, senators, aides, people like us, and no one knew what to do. There was this moment of suspension in that vulnerability where I felt so connected to everybody else, to everybody else. And I knew that ultimately our security as a country so depended on that very connection. And you know what happened. We did not, we couldn't bear to stay in that vulnerability. We declared war 
on Iraq, which had nothing to do with September 11th, but we once again asserted that we were the biggest, best, strongest, toughest military. And we went out into an unwinnable, unendable war. Security that comes with a military force behind it is real in some ways. There are ways that I'm protected because I'm a US citizen, especially because I'm a white US citizen, especially because I'm a white middle class US citizen. There are ways that I walk around in security that other people will never know. And there are ways that that security makes me afraid to take risks that other people take every single day without even considering them. There are ways that that kind of security lulls me into kind of a stupefaction and a, you know, lockdown mode. Stay safe, stay in my bunker, stay in my barca lounger, stay safe. You know, years ago, a body worker showed me this thing and said, make your hands the way that they naturally go. Which way one finger will be over another? Okay, now move them so that the other finger is over. Move them so that the finger that's not usually on top is on top. Now, which way do you feel safer? And I think all of us would say that we feel more safe in the way that we habitually clasp our hands because that's what we're told. Safety and security are all about habit and the familiar. But then the person said, which way are you able to act more quickly? Which way are you more conscious? Which way are you paying more attention? And all of those come from being in the unhabitual hand-holding form. I wanna suggest as we explore this topic of risk and security that perhaps we're safest when we're paying the most attention, when we're not doing what's habitual, when we are standing fully as the people who we are with the values that we hold in relationship to the other people on the planet who share those values, when we make ourselves vulnerable in relationship. Now, there are ways that I don't want to do that. I really, we all, I think, who are comfortable default to comfort. But the older I get, the more that I see that my own life needs to be about risk with the people who have no choice about risk, precisely because I do have that choice. I have that privilege. That gives me a voice that some people will never have in this world. So as we explore this topic of risk and security, I wanna put in some other concepts of privilege and comfort to lift up to explore through the month. I'm eager to hear perspectives from those of you in other countries who have not had my formative experience and I'm eager to learn from you. It's a blessing to be creating something new where we can all learn to take risks together, where we can all find the courage to act. I can only hope and pray that each of us finds a path forward where we take risks that bring us more in alignment with our true selves and leave behind the kind of security that's actually killing us.